All right, so this evening, uh, we just want to spend a few minutes with you in looking into God's Word. And uh, like I always say, God's Word is alive, is active, and it goes in those places where it affects us most. All right, so let's get into the Word and open your Bibles, if you will. Turn with me to Luke 19, verse 9. Luke 19, verse 9. And I'm reading from New King James Version. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector. He was rich. So if you like, just there, if you like, in our day, this man will be like uh, the, the Commissioner General of uh, ZRA. Okay, that's what this man's position was like in that time. He was a chief tax collector. And he sought to see who Jesus was. So all he wanted to see was, who is this Jesus I've been hearing about? Oh, that's what he wanted to see. He says he sought to see who Jesus was. But he could not because of the crowd. For he was of short stature. Okay, so there was a challenge in trying to see this hero that has been you know, hearing over. So the challenge was his, his height. But it didn't limit him. He says, in, you read on, it says he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycam tree to see him. So he said, oh, he's coming this way. So what am I going to do? There's that tree there. I'm going to make it happen. So when we value something, we always find a way of making sure it happens. So he valued that moment. He wanted to see Jesus, and he went and climbed the tree. Verse 5. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, who are they? The people especially the Pharisees of that time, the scribes, they saw it. And what did they say? They said they all complained, saying, he has gone to be a guest of a man who is a sinner. So then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, so he, I'm sure he heard what they said. He stood and said, this is now at the house. He said, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore it. Um, for what? So he said, uh, in fact, if you, if you read, he's saying, I give. In other words, he didn't say, I will give. I said, I'm doing it right now. Okay? If, if you're a scholar, you will just know that Zacchaeus was referring to uh, being a Jewish man. He referred to... Leviticus 5, verse 1 to 6. So just quickly, let's run through that so that you kind of find out what he was saying about restitution. Then the Lord said to Moses, If anyone sins and is unfaithful to the, to the Lord by deceiving a neighbor about something entrusted to them or left in their care or about something stolen or they cheat their neighbor or they find lost property and lie about it or if they swear falsely about any such sin that the people may commit. When that this, their sin is in any of these words, realize their guilt, they must retain what they have stolen or taken by extortion, or what was entrusted to them, or the lost property they found, or whatever it was they saw falsely about. They must make restitution in full and add a fifth of the value to it and give it all to the owner of the day they present their guilty offering. In other words, Zacchaeus was making things right with the Lord. He was, making, uh, he was offering a guilty uh, offering to the Lord. But at the same time, something that I never saw is that he's saying, look, I want to make things right with the Lord, but I also want to make things right with those that I have extorted money from. So God wants us to make things right with him, but it's also important to make things right with our fellow man. 
I think that's a good lesson we can learn from there. So make right, things right with your neighbor. Make things right with your brother. Make things right with your sister. So let's go to the story again. Zacchaeus was a rich and powerful man. He was a man of stature, if you like. He had stature with the authorities. He was a rich man. Okay? He was the CEO, if you like, of, of his company in those days. Okay? He was a big man. But something interesting is that about this big man, a rich man, is that he does something that is unthinkable. He climbs a tree. Imagine a CEO of ZRA or any space that you'll be thinking of going to run and climb a tree because all he wanted to see was this man. All right? In our day and time today, that would be news flash, breaking news. CEO, so, so, and so, climbing a tree to see a man. But that is what. So something that was more important to uh, Zacchaeus. What he did was, in our time, was not dignified. It wasn't honorable, if you like. But the man sought to find Jesus. So let's go to verse 10. Or if he, if he, if he wanted, he would have also sent people. Emissaries. He says, you know what? I'm a rich man, a big man. Just go uh, call Jesus. I want to see him in my house. But he did it by himself. Verse 10. Then Jesus said to him, Today, Today, salvation has come to this house because he, he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save which was lost. Jesus saw the desperation in the heart of Zacchaeus that he needed salvation. He needed salvation. And what is salvation? What does it what does it mean when we say salvation? Salvation means help. Jesus says help has come to this house. Deliverance has come to this house. Redemption has come to this house. It's more like what happened when the children of Israel were in Egypt. When salvation came, it meant that they were moving from bondage to freedom. Deliverance came. So Jesus says the deliverer has come. Is in this house okay so Jesus is our help so it carries with it also the divine connotation Jesus also is affirming uh, Zacchaeus his repentance his repentance so Jesus recognized the change of heart and assured him of a place in the kingdom of God salvation and tell him salvation has come to this house all right so when Jesus is on the scene and he comes in your house and is a guest, just know that freedom or help has come. And Zacchaeus made sure that that happened in his life. All right. So that's what happened to Zacchaeus. So Jesus did not come, if you read on, Jesus did not come to affirm the righteous. Is, but he said, he says, I came to seek out the lost and to bring them back to the flock. And he came specifically to seek out people like Zacchaeus, rich people, famous people, people with money, people with status, people with... Everybody says they also belong to the flock of God. And the heart, the disposition of Zacchaeus was ready for that. So Zacchaeus represents all of us represents all of us who are far from God. Whether we have status, whether we don't have status, he represents all of us. So God wants us to come into this community, into his family that includes, so anybody who comes to him must come to him in faith and in repentance in Christ. And that's what it's a case to do. The poor, the sinners, the tax collectors, everybody must come. So Zacchaeus, um, in a way, pictures the transformation of sinner despite the status as a rich man. He pictures that. Okay? It's a picture also of the mission of Jesus. The lost must be sought and must be saved. And that's why Jesus came. So salvation has come to this house. So let's look just quickly, let's look at 
three blessings of salvation. Three blessings of salvation. When we say salvation has come to this house, what does it come with? If you like, what does this salvation come with? First, it comes, it means that there's life. Life has come. First John 5, 12 says this, He who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Salvation has come. Do you have the Son in you? If you don't have the Son, Scripture tells us you don't have life. So life, number one. Second is that this forgiveness. When you have the Son of God, there is forgiveness. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not one, not two, but all unrighteousness. So Zacchaeus qualified to receive forgiveness and all, all of it. All right? So you have forgiveness from the Lord once you have the Son of God in you. You have life and you have forgiveness. And number three, least, and last but not least, is that you have peace. You have peace. The beautiful thing is that the peace that comes with the Son of God is that it doesn't, not as the world gives. This one is supernatural, divine peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding as scriptures post it. You have peace. So, again, Romans 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified, to be justified is to be as though we did not do it or we did not sin. Since we've been justified through faith, we believed through faith. It says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You have peace. Salvation has come to this house. So you have salvation when you receive Christ. You have peace, you have life, you have forgiveness. So yeah, so I, I hope you will, will take time to think about those things and uh, share to others, share the link. And um, those of us who haven't uh, received Christ as our Lord and Savior, Salvation has come to this house. Invite him in your house. Invite him in your house. Be like Zacchaeus. Sought for him. Sought for him. And he promises, he says, when you seek me, you will find me. And Zacchaeus sought to find Jesus. And for sure, Jesus was found. And he brought salvation in his household. And not only did Zacchaeus make things right with God, he made things right with man. So we hope that you, you are going to have a great day and continue living a life of faith. And God bless you. We'll see you next week. And it's bye for me.